some good stuff when you see them on the, on the YouTube videos. I, I'm certain I, I was looking at radio stations, uh, Andrew. You might have to trawl through them for, for quite a lot. People's radio stations, the way they set up. But uh, I, I'm sure what you're saying, um, he had this thing, I don't know where it was, 16 switches or 32 switches that he could put any configuration through it. But as you say, I wouldn't trust it if you're uh, if you're putting one one feeder onto another one and your RF goes out straight through the back of another radio, especially if you've got like an icon there worth about eight thousand pounds, and you put four hundred watts through it. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> as it just lights up and everything inside it dies, you know. Um, I I think the best way is. Uh, just keep yourself dedicated to antenna switches, you know. If you've got four antennas, run them all into there. And, and what I do is um, I run all the, uh, when I was running multiple HF aerials, I run them into one aerial switch straight into the back of aerial, aerial port one on the auto tuner. So uh, they all tuned up. Well, they was all, all the frequencies on there were stored anyway on this um, LDG auto tuner. Once you tune the frequency on uh, HF, it remembers it on this one, uh, so you don't have to touch it again. And uh, it's got two aerial ports on the back of it. But one is the uh, is the default one. That's the one you use all the time. So it's quite a nice tuner once you get used to it. But um, uh, mine, as I say, you run AM Radio Deluxe. All I have to do is just go straight on. Uh, click on a station and uh, click on the, um, the TX up there, uh, tune TX and it tunes it instantly. Or it just goes click, it's already been tuned. Uh, time out mate, back to you. Yeah, no worries. Just looking at this bloody HS120. Can't believe this so bloody expensive. I can't believe I paid that sort of money for it. I'm trying to, to find the place where where I bought mine, but yeah, it, at the moment I've got each antenna um, plugged into each radio, and then if I need to change them over, I just unplug it from one and plug it into the other, um, and then uh, and do it do it that way. I think that's that's probably the the easiest way of doing it. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to find where I bought my Atlas. I'm sure I didn't spend that sort of money on it. But um, but yeah, it'd just be nice. Yeah, when I was playing around the other day, I just wanted to see what the signals were like on a different antenna, and I'd um, plug it from one radio, plug it into the other, and then put it back, and that sort of thing. It'd be nice to just sort of have a bank of switches and say, okay, I want this radio here, go into this antenna there, and you sort of press those two buttons, um, and you know it doesn't sort of let you select the same antenna for the two radios. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't managed to find anything that. Um, that would let me do it, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, well, yeah, I'm just, just looking. And, yeah, I must have paid that sort of money for the antenna. I can't remember paying all that money for my bloody antas. I just sort of saw, saw one there on eBay. Um, the 350 quid, I can't remember paying that much for it. But, uh, yeah, one you know, one to many, that's okay, but many to many. I don't think uh, many people have sorted that one out, but it would be really nice if you could um, with, with a bank of switches. I'm sure you could do it with electronics, um, but uh, you've got to be a little bit careful. And like I said, you don't, you don't want to put RF from one straight to the bump of another. Doesn't matter whether you paid a hundred dollars for your for your radio or you paid a few thousand for it. You certainly don't want to do something like that. G1 LQT M0 LTA. M0 LTA G1 LQT. Yes, uh, I just I, I would say um, Andrew, you're better to have. Um, you know, a dedicated block of uh, antenna switches so you know what's what. Um, I mean, 
even in my shack, I, what I tend to do is I, I mark all my cables up um, with red tape, the HF cables and the the white um, cables, I know is two metres. Um, for the jaw band jargy, I put two, um, two uh, rings on it and for the, uh, the um, vertical I just put a single ring on it so I know if I unplug anything and just leave it dangling I know what's what so I know where it goes and I know what it's got to be plugged into um, you know little things like that but um, yes uh, you know to, to mess with switches and stuff like that um, I'm trying to remember the name of this station He's, um, this guy I, I see him on eBay he works for himself and he's got so much money, Andrew. He changes his radios every four months, four or five months. And I mean, he's got the um, the ICOM, the big ICOM, the base station worth about £8,000. He's got uh, noise gates, he's got everything uh, in there. And he's, he's built a special room to keep them all in there. And he's got a little bit at the bottom there. He says, oh, my business turned over £1.8 million pound profit last year and I thought yeah well you can go and afford to buy all that sort of stuff you know I've just bought a radio worth 700 pound and uh, um, I'm well I'm not struggling but um, it sort of knocked a big hole in my pocket he could go out and buy five six thousand pound radio and uh, you know big screens he's got big Samsung screens and everything else up there now when you look at it it's so so impressive but I think we said, why well, he's got them all turned on, and I think, well, why do you want all them turned on? You can only work one HF rig at a time, and one two metre rig at a time. So, uh, you can't talk on both rigs at the same time. So, uh, it looks impressive, but not practical. 